Hi, welcome to this uh, Coversite C1 uh, video. My name is Markus Wendt and I'm going to be showing you a uh, feature which we are introducing um, uh, called Racer Functions, which enable you to use ASP.NET Racer syntax uh, with Coversite C1 uh, and uh, a little extra. So if we... Um, I won't uh, be showing many sh uh, slides here, basically just this one. Um, I'll be showing you how to uh, integrate a, a standard red, uh, Razor web page into the CMS. Uh, I'll show you how to uh, like add a Razor functionality to a page. Uh, and then I'll be showing you how Razor and C1 function parameters uh, can work together to uh, basically uh, move the configuration power from the developer to the end user inserting uh, the functionality on web pages and I'll uh, shortly uh, describe how you can uh, uh, get your hands on this. It's all free open source. Uh, all you see here is uh, freely available from the internet. Uh, you can use it uh, without any cost and uh, it's free open source. Okay, so I'll do a quick demo. Um, so here I have a Visual Studio. Uh, it's not a requirement to, to work with Razor. Uh, basically, uh, any text editor will do. Uh, of course, uh, being a uh, Microsoft technology, Microsoft has spent uh, time uh, giving us uh, syntax highlighting and uh, and features like that, but it's not a requirement. So what I've done is I've created a Razor web page. It's a, a standard Razor web page. I call it uh, Color Cube. Um, and, uh, what this does is that uh, it allows me to uh, do some basic configuration. I'm doing this in, in uh, the private constants, uh, defining a cube, uh, how wide I want my cube to be, how many rows and columns uh, it should have, uh, some color settings, uh, and also uh, some border and padding uh, information. Um, I'll, you, you'll, you'll see it in a moment, and it all makes sense. And then I have a uh, small um, HTML template here, uh, where you can see the HTML and the Razor uh, features um, living side by side. If you're not familiar with Razor, you're basically looking at a Razor page right here. Um, very lightweight syntax, uh, trying to, uh, to make it a more elegant way to, to mix code and markup. What this does uh, is that it will uh, emit a uh, style section uh, and uh, and a bunch of divisions, uh, and the styling will make the divisions appear like a color cube. So if I go and uh, view this page, you have it right here. Uh, this is the result. Um, just quickly make this side by side so it's more obvious what is going on. Uh, one of the things we're doing here is like we're uh, doing uh, some random coloring when we're building up some background colors. So if I go refresh this, uh, you'll see uh, that it's a quite quite colorful little thing. Uh, I can go and uh, I'll quickly show the source code. So so that is demystified. Uh, this is the source it's, that is generated. Um, I have two two by two. Uh, 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 the matrix here, so a total of four elements, and so I'm, I'm setting the colors right here, and, and here's the divisions that's doing the elements. Um, let's just quickly try so you can see that here I do have some configuration control, but it's in code. Uh, I'll say I want a 10 by 10 uh, box, so I get 10 by 10, and I can uh, go here and increase the decrease. I'll just go that way width of the, the item and it gets smaller and if I look at the markup of course now I have 100 rows and so this is adapted to it. Okay, so this is completely standard Razor. Uh, now let's try to make this run in South, uh, our CMS. So with uh, Coversite 2.1 basically what you need to do is you need to go and uh, uh, install a package if you haven't done so already. I'll show you how you do that later. It's really easy. And then you go to uh, App Data uh, and Razor and uh, you uh, you drop your file here. Um, I'd like uh, my color cube to go into the examples folder, so I'll just put it there. Now with this, uh, we will pick up uh, that you added a functionality uh, and uh, make it available inside the CMS. So basically now it's integrated. 
uh, this is all you need to do. Um, so let's try to uh, embed it on a page. So I've created a, a, a quick little uh, website. It's based on our starter site. Very simple. Uh, just uh, deleted some some of the sample pages in here. So it's a uh, web website. Just need to launch up the website for the first time here. Uh, so this is what my page looks like, and this is where I'd like uh, the, this color cube to go. Um, so I'll just go back here. So I'll mark it where I want it, and I say I want to insert a function. Again, this is a razor function, so by uh, doing this uh, in the file, you are introducing the function into the system. And go to examples, and here we have my uh, color cube file. So I say okay to that one. Okay, so it's gives me an indication that they are a functionality. I go preview it. And I have my color cube uh, right there. Um, just go ahead and see that it has different behavior. I can uh, just give it a larger size so it's more interesting to look at. See how that fares. OK. so. Uh, now we have the uh, the functionality running inside the CMS. That's really easy. Now, what you uh, sh should um, notice here is that the styling information is uh, uh, always in place, uh, even though this is part of a larger web page. Uh, my uh, style declarations I did here in my header. I'll just quickly show you uh, these. They are actually lifted to the final page header, so so this just works for me. Uh, if I need to put something in the page head, I simply just do it right here, and it will appear in the head of the final uh, page. Fairly straightforward. Now, a bit uh, shame here is that uh, if I wanted my users to be able to to control how this should behave, uh, they would have to go and edit the code uh, as, uh, as things are right now. And if I wanted to have like uh, multiple incarnations, I'd have to. And make multiple files here. Uh, I could, just, of course, share some code and do inheritance, but but basically, I'd like to pass control to the end user. And I'll just quickly show you how you do that. So um, what we've done is, uh, when we load this up, we'll go and uh, do a reflection on the uh, on the uh, razor class uh, being generated. So if I go and change this to a uh, public property. Like this. Oops. The uh, the CMS should pick up on this and uh, offer me this as a parameter, so I can now control the uh, width of my uh, uh, race, uh, racer uh, rendering uh, from within the CMS. So let's try to go back here. Now, if we invoke this, double click it. We'll get an editor, and if there are any parameters in here, uh, they'll be available to me. So now I have a actually a total width uh, parameter. So let's go and say uh, we want a total width of uh, 100, just to get a visible change. So now it's 100 by 100. And, uh, let's try to make it 500 again. And preview it. And now it's 500 again. Also, like a, a nice little feature is I can actually go copy this element. So I do a Control C and uh, do a paste, Control V, like that. So now I have the function twice. Let's just go and change this one to be 400, so we can see a slight difference. To preview, now I have the uh, the functionality running twice, and I'm, I'm, I'm in control of what's going on here. Now. Right now, it's a required parameter. I have to specify the width uh, of, of the, the function. Uh, but we can uh, control um, some default values. And we can also um, have the end user uh, receive some uh, help text and, and, and a nice little label. So if I paste in this um, attribute on my uh, public property, I can give it a uh, label a help text and a default value. So basically, I want uh, the total width to be a 500 uh, unless the, the user is overriding my value. So if I now insert the function again, so go function, 
the color cube. 